Miriam spoke against Moses Some things she should not have done If only her father Would have corrected her when she was young But now she's angered the Lord By getting out of her place He struck her with leprosy And put her out the camp seven days And God said that if you don't repent, you'll likewise perish. So focus on that. What, hey, what you say, First Corinthians 3? Hey, what, hey, bro, what you say? About wheat? Is it good? Is it cool? Um, I mean, it's not good for me. I know it's not good. It ain't good for nobody. Huh? I'm a, I'm a, I'm well, then I'm gonna speak specifically to you. It's not good for you. It's the book of First Corinthians, chapter three and verse sixteen. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? That's the first thing you have to come to grips with. That you are the temple of God. All right, you're the temple of God. So let me ask you this: You're the temple of God. Should you be defiling yourself with things God tells you not to do? Because where is it that the, the culture of marijuana came from? Give me, hold that, Deuteronomy 28, uh, Sir Wood Stone. Where did that culture come from? Where like, we, it keeps me calm and it gives me the spiritual sense to, to uh, understand everything. I'm tapped into the spiritual world. Where do you think that came from? You're right. Where did they get it from? Where did they get it from? They got it from the East Indians. Same way they got curry chicken and the curry spices from. It's from the idol god Krishna. No, Shiva. Shiva, the god of marijuana. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. So we scattered among all people, including the East Indians, like where the Rastas got that from. From the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods. So us smoking marijuana is a, a religious cultural thing for the East Indians who worship the God of marijuana. That's not what we do. God never told us to inhale smoke. You understand? We don't inhale smoke. We don't do those things. Come on. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which thou, which neither thou, nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. So we're not supposed to do what the other nations do. First Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. So God says that anybody that defiles the temple of God, now, God says anybody that defiles the temple of God, God's going to destroy them. So why do you think we out here and we teach marriage at the rate that we teach? I mean, there's Hebrews 13 and 4. We can bring this scripture out 20 times throughout the same day. And it never gets old. You know why? Because our relationship with our women is actually the cause of a lot of our problems. If not majority of our problems. Because it's based off of how the young men and women are raised from that moment on. But if we're if we're products of single parent households, and we're more likely to be incarcerated, we're more likely to be murderers, we're more likely to be effeminate, so on and so forth, that is a problem for our nation. So we preach certain things, well we preach all about it, but we we try to repair some of the most important things that is like the linchpin for everything else. Come on. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. So it's 
said the same thing in Corinthians. That God is going to judge those who defile the temple. So you defiling yourself with the weed, because the only reason why people smoke the weed is, is a lot of times to get high and get high with a girl, or a girl get high with a guy, and then it leads to what? Sex. And then that sex leads to what? Single parent household. Because the Negro ain't staying long. He, he don't live in, the, the average black and Latino man don't live at home with his kids. His kids, he got multiple kids in different houses. And they're all raised by the, the baby mama's boyfriends. That we're, that's, that's what we are. We're the products of that. Why do you think drive-bys happen in our community like that? Because there ain't no fathers in the house. Do you think it's okay to knock the woman off, give her a baby, then she got another baby by another dude, and then there's two. What, what you going to teach the kids? Nothing. You know why? Because the daggone boyfriend is around your kids more than you are. Bring it out. That's, that's, that's the problem with our, our community. Okay, explain to me. I get you. Do your, your baby mom got a boyfriend? Okay, she's with you. That, then that don't apply to you. That's like somebody talking about it's raining in oranges and I ain't see it. I'm not going to speak on it. You get what I'm saying? But the traditional black man got multiple babies living in multiple houses. Right. See, but here's the thing. Read Hebrews 13. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. Are you married? Well, you're a dishonorable man. And you make that black woman dishonorable. You know why? God says it. You believe in God? Okay, then that's how... That's, what, what do you believe in? Anunnaki? All right, give me um, give me a scripture out the Anunnaki that told us that we would go into slavery to the white man. You know, then why should you believe that? In the Bible, it says it. Let's say, let's say a chicken wrote the Bible. He's truer than the Anunnaki. Let's say this chicken, a chicken nugget wrote the Bible. It's truer than the Anunnaki. Right, right, right. Well, what I'm at, see, but you, you listen, let me ask you this. You ever follow boxing? And you hear one boxer say, I'll beat your butt. What does the other boxer say? I'll beat your butt. So in other words, he's saying, prove it. Show me, right? Yeah, show me. Show me. I just show you. You read out of the book. Oh, okay. All right. What you read out of? Huh? What you read out of? I do, I do studies. Science. Okay. Science. In what? Science. In what? Science. You do it every day. Okay. Science. In what? Science. Hey, well, show me something. Disappear. Disappear. I'll be right back. Don't go nowhere because you're making your woman dishonorable. It's just that simple. We're not going to allow the black man to whore our sisters out without saying something to him. Hey, you said you do bad magic, right? All you got to do is show me. Okay. Like what? What you doing right now? Okay. Well, then. Now, I'm going to ask you. I'm going to say prove it. So show me in the science that you do every day that told you or your ancestors that we would go on cargo slave ships to the so-called white man. That's all I'm asking. But also it was us that sold each other out to uh, let, Let's say that's true. It is true. Okay, let's say it's true. You forget though. I'm an Indian. Give me, give me Joel 3. I'm, I'm going to show you. Indian. Listen, hold on, don't walk away. You, you throwing smoke bombs and then walking away. No, no, no. Because I'm going I'm to flat out tell you, those who sold us wasn't our people. They just was dark-skinned people like us. Right. No, it was not us. We are the Israelites. Right. You understand? The Israelites are not the Egyptians. Right. Or the Chinese, the Japanese. Huh? Still. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. What I'm asking you, are the Chinese you? Oh, oh, so there's a separation between you and the Chinese? Huh? 
Oh my goodness, bro. Just be Okay, so you're a woman inside. You jelly inside. Because you're everything. Okay, alright. So let's let's keep it let's keep it one hundred then. Three. It's the book of Joel, chapter three and verse four. Yay! And what have ye to do with me? Oh Tyree and Zidon. Tyree and Zidon is the African nations. We're from Northeast East Africa, yes, that's true. But we're not the same nation as all of those other nations. We got dark skin just like they got dark skin, but we're not the same people. We have a different lineage. Alright? What have you? Say it again. What you gonna go do? Roll up with some K2 or something? What you got to do? What important thing you got to do? Do I look like a K2? You want me to answer that? Do I look like I use weed? What if I tell you K2 is weed, ain't it? Synthetic weed. I'm not worried about that. That's man. So, what if God told you why? What if God told you why you don't own the buildings right here and over there and over there? Because I didn't put no money into it. Huh? Because I didn't put no money into it. What if I told you God told you you wouldn't have no money? If I didn't have it. And you would be on put on cargo slave ships and shipped off and be slaves to the white man. Brother, me. hey, you ain't off the hook. Come teach me some Anunnaki stuff. Do you find an Anunnaki in that um the zigzag paper? I do I have The weed paper? They don't even call it zigzag no more. Go. Yeah. And what have ye to do with me, O Tyree, and Zidon, and all the coast of Palestine? Will you render me a recompense? And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly, pleasant things. So God is explaining to you why you don't own no buildings right now. How about you listen to this, bro? How, how about you do less talking and more listening so you would learn our point of view? I'm just saying, you would learn our point of view if you like listen to us when we try to give you our point of view. But the Bible says, this is why you don't have no money. This is why you don't own no buildings. Come on. Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temple. Hey, your homeboys are standing at the bus stop with you, bro. You ain't going nowhere. Come on now. We're talking good manly stuff. We're talking what's going to get our nation out of the condition we in. Hey, hey Anunnaki, my man. Your woman gonna tell you when to walk. That's what we mean about this simp mentality that our brothers have, man. You a man, you supposed to be here. Your woman ain't supposed. That's was that slick. As you 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 following when your woman said that's believable. You just wipe your sweat off. That's crazy. Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians that ye might remove them far from their border. So we were sold by the Africans and the Arabs. And we were brought to the shores of America. But what our black people gotta understand is they think they so slick, so tough, so daggone real but you know what the translation of the real nigga is today? If we were living in the 18th, 1600s? You know what they would call the real nigga today in the 1600s? Hey, big man, what do you think the definition for real nigga would be in the 1600s? Okay, define a real nigga right now. Somebody taking care of the kids. That ain't what real niggas do. Them is men. Them is husbands. Right. Yeah, it's a okay, let me let me help you. A real nigga in the 1600s would be a house nigga. Bring it out. That's what he would be. So they, they walk around with the slickness, the cool cat daddy vibe, how hard and tough they are. But the Bible would have called, I mean, um, back in the day, you would have been called a house nigga because you're a traitor to your own. You shoot nobody but your own. Hey, excuse me. Can I ask you a question? Is this y'all y'all Christians? Well, not in the sense of the word. The sense of the word today is Christianity. It's white supremacy. It's what this guy represents. But according to the Bible, 
the only people that can be Christians are the Israelites who follow Christ. Yeah. Deuteronomy 22 5. Yeah. I the was book just of Deuteronomy. Y'all telling the truth around here. Uh, so I fuck with it. Yeah. Let me ask something though. Is the truth a bitter pill to swallow? Not so for me. It, it goes down me. easy? Yeah, in my opinion, because it's in my opinion, it's harder to uh do the faith. You know what I mean? We're all trying to mask right now. Like we don't know what the truth is. You know, you feel me? What you think the truth is? The Bible? Yes or no. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. Bring it out. The bitter pill. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. First Corinthians 6 and 9. So this is a law about cross-dressing. Right? Yeah. It's a law because God gave us ways we're supposed to carry ourselves. A man is supposed to wear, be dressed with a beard around his face, dressed like a man with his pants on. You know what I mean? A woman's not supposed to act like a man, dress like a man. Men aren't supposed to act the feminine. But that's not to, that's not to throw jabs at you because the Bible says the brothers or the apostles beforehand, not not the twelve disciples, but the followers of Christ. Yeah, I'm, I asked you about the truth, and I said, "Is it a bitter pill to swallow?" You said no, so it shouldn't. It shouldn't be a bitter pill to swallow. I do. Well, actually, I want to ask you that. Does, in your opinion, if your truth is relevant to you, do you think it should be relevant to everybody else? Well. I'm going to say this, my truth, if I try to put my truth off of anybody, I'm nothing but a man. I'm not to be the lead at all. But God's truth, on the other hand, is undeniable. Because did you create the sky or the sun? Me neither. Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, catch the next one. Catch the next one. First Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. No. Will ye not? that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. So that's an easy law that we can judge, right? A homosexual man, a lesbian woman, a feminine man, or a masculine woman, they're not going to get the kingdom of God. Nor thieves, nor adulterers, nor covetous people. We have to explain that to our people. And we have to make it clear that we got to come back to God. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Is you. And finally, my brother, be strong.